Even though his family descended from the city of Dvin, located in modern southern Armenia, he was born and raised in Tikrit, a city located in modern Iraq. We're talking about Saladin, the Kurd who would grow up to unite the Muslim society and lead a war against the Christian crusaders. This is everything about Kurdistan with the whole new video. As usual, don't forget to subscribe, share and like this video and if possible, consider donating an amount of your own to our PayPal account strictly for our survival and further charity donation. More information is available in the description box below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Saladin grew up in the Seljuk Empire, which stretched from modern Turkey in the west to modern Uzbekistan in the east. The Seljuk Empire was divided into different provinces, where the Syrian province was ruled by a local lord named Nur Adin. In his teenage, Saladin, alongside his uncle Sherko, worked for Nur Adin and were soon sent to the Shia ruled Egypt, which was the center of Fatimid Caliphate in 1164. Sherko was already a high-ranking Kurdish military commander and at the time general of the Zinjid army. Saladin and Sherko's mission in Egypt was to help a man named Shawar to restore his position as vizier at the Fatimid Caliph Al-Adid. During their visit in Egypt, Saladin showed great leader characteristics when he in local conflicts objected Christian assaults. This alongside with his personal and newly found relationship with Al-Adid made him climb rapidly through the ranks of the Fatimid government. Eventually, Saladin and Sherko also succeeded with their mission. However, a power struggle soon started between Shawar, the new vizier, and eventually Sherko would assassinate Shawar in the power struggle that came up, mainly due to Shawar's continually habit of switching alliances, allying himself first with one side and then with the other. However, Sherko died in 1169, and for that reason, Al-Adid chose Saladin as his new vizier, a rare nomination of a Sunni Muslim in the Shia ruled caliphate. During his time as vizier, Saladin took more and more control over the Fatimid foundations and when Al-Adid died in 1171, Saladin abolished the Fatimid caliphate and announced the area's allegiance with the Sunni Abbasid caliphate which had its center in Baghdad. For the upcoming couple of years, Saladin got more and more power as he achieved a great victory in the conquest of Yemen and peacefully could enter Syria after an agreement between him and the local governor there. Saladin could now appoint himself with the title Emir, something that worried the Christian Syrians and Egypts. Eventually, he was attacked by Christian forces, a mistake which made Saladin enter Palestine with his forces. By then, Saladin had taken the power as a new sultan over a whole empire. For the upcoming 10 years, Saladin secured his territories and united several Muslim armies under one common army, something that never happened before. A big and important minority of Saladin armies came from his and his uncle's own Kurdish background. Troops of Kurds emigrated into both Lebanon and Palestine and until this day a big minority of Kurds still lives in this area known as modern Lebanon and Palestine. Saladin evolved a personal problem with Reynald of Chatalion, 
which at the time were Count of Jerusalem, Reynald constantly assaulted Muslim trading and pilgrimage routes, something that Saladin couldn't tolerate. He also threatened to attack the holy cities of Mecca and Medina, and in retaliation, Saladin twice attempted to besiege the castle of Kerak. For a moment, Saladin's armies made a big threat towards the Christians in the area who had Jerusalem under control for the past 88 years. Saladin chose, however, not to attack Jerusalem, mainly due to the peace treaty that the Christians and the Muslims had signed many years before Saladin took the power. Saladin was known for keeping his word and thereof awaited a mistake from the Christian side. That mistake came when Reynald of Chatalion ordered the attack on a Muslim caravan on its way to Mecca. According to Reynald, the attack of the Muslim caravan was nothing but an answer to Saladin's assault on the castle of Kerak and Reynald's fortress in Ultra Jordan. Saladin declared war on the Christians and swore that he would personally kill Reynald. Further on, in the Battle of Hatim, where Saladin's armies faced the combined forces of Gu de Lusignan, king of Jerusalem, and Raymond III of Tripoli, Saladin went victorious. The battle itself was a total disaster for the crusader who lost the majority of their forces. Most of them died in battle, but many were weakened and even killed due to the limited access of water. Reynald and Guy of Lusingen were captured by Saladin. Saladin then offered a goblet of water to Guy, a token of hospitality that meant his life would be spared. Guy drank part of it and handed over the rest to Reynald, who drank up the rest. Saladin confronted Reynald and said, I did not offer it to you. And in front of Guy, Saladin cut the throat of Reynald. Guy of Lusignan were frightened that he was going for the same fate, but Saladin ensured him of his safety by simply saying, A king does not kill a king. However, Saladin didn't have any more reason to be defensive towards Jerusalem. Right away after the execution of Reynald, Saladin's armies aimed for Jerusalem, but Saladin knew how difficult it would be to take on the defense of Jerusalem. He preferred to take Jerusalem without any bloodshed and offer generous terms. Those left in the holy city refused and was prepared to die before leaving it peacefully. At last, the siege would begin and keep going for a long time. Eventually, another opportunity of negotiating terms came up. The defender of Jerusalem, Balan of Iblin, negotiated of complete freedom for the non-Muslim people of Jerusalem, and they agreed on letting every non-Muslim of Jerusalem to live for a Christian land in safety, while those non-Christian who would like to stay needed to pay a certain ransom for every person, which at that time was seen as a very merciful low amount of money. In the 2nd of October 1187, Jerusalem once again was under the control of the Muslims. Upon the capture of Jerusalem, Saladin summoned the Jews and permitted them to resettle in the city. In particular, the Jewish tribe of Ashkelon responded to Saladin's request. In the year of 1188, Saladin released Guy of Lusignan, who left Jerusalem with his wife and eventually became the new king of Cyprus. When news of the defeat in Jerusalem reached Europe, it was decided that Europe would unite in a new crusade. Armies from Germany, France, and England marched towards Jerusalem. In front, the King of England, Richard Lionheart, stood. 
In Lionheart's first big victory, he defeated the Muslims in the city of Acre. Afterwards, around 3,000 Muslim prisoners were executed, an action that until the date are debated whether if Lionheart ordered as a reprisal of the Christians who the Muslim had slain, or if it was due to the large numbers of prisoners that couldn't be left alive after Lionheart's departure. The armies of Saladin and Lionheart first engaged in combat at the Battle of Arsuf on the 7th of September 1191. This battle would cause Saladin his first big defeat in where he suffered from heavy losses and where he was forced to withdraw. The victory strengthened the crusaders who moved closer and closer towards Jerusalem. However, Lionheart and Saladin would be passing envoys back and forth with the goal to negotiate a truce. In one of them, Lionheart proposed that his sister, Joan of England, Queen of Sicily, should marry Saladin's brother and that Jerusalem could be their wedding gift, a proposal that Saladin rejected mainly due to the demand of converting Saladin's brother to Christianity. In July 1192, Saladin laid siege on the city of Jaffa. He almost captured it completely before Lionheart's forces arrived. In a battle outside the city, Saladin lost to Lionheart a second time. However, this time, Lionheart's crusader army also suffered from heavy losses, which led to the decision that the crusaders wouldn't retake Jerusalem due to the risk of total collapse. Not long after that, Saladin suffered from a fever which led to his death in March 1193. He was buried in Damascus at the Umayyad Mosque. Saladin is remembered for his justice, intelligence and inviolable faithfulness to his word. However, some Kurdish nationalists has aimed a lot of criticism towards Saladin for fighting for his religion rather than his people. Today, several districts in the capital of Kurdistan is named after Saladin, not at least the suburban district Massif Saladin and the Saladin University in Hawler. The KRG coat of arms is also adorned with the Saladin eagle. If you like this video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. More info on how you can take part of everything about Kurdistan is available in the description box below.